Hello everybody, so today I'm going to be doing a video on Matthew 27. I'm not going to continue from Luke, uh, Genesis today, but I will, I will uh, continue from that. I was just preaching for 20 minutes and my eyes turned off. Now I have to do it again, all over again. But hopefully this goes smoothly, that the iPad doesn't turn off while I'm recording. It made me really frustrated, but... Today is the day when Jesus died on the cross for our sins. I want to show y'all my phone wallpaper right here. This is a cross. And right here is also the cross on my phone. It's been my wallpaper for a little while now. I really like, I really like those wallpapers. Anyway, so I'm going to pray and then I'm going to head straight into it. Dear God, thank you for this time I can do this. Please bless this message, Lord, and please not have the iPad turn off when I'm recording this time. And I love you, Lord. Please get rid of uh, COVID and all the other stuff. And please bless this time for this message. In your name, Lord, amen. So now I'm going to read all of Matthew 27. Um... And then I'm going to talk about it. So let's do it. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And they bound him and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate the governor. Then when Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he changed his mind and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priest of the elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. And throwing down the pieces of silver into the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priest, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since it is blood money. So they took counsel and brought with them the prisoner's field as a burial place for strangers. Therefore the field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken by the prophet Jeremiah, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the piece, price of them, on whom a price had been set by some of the sons of Israel. And they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord directed me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the kingdom of the Jews? Jesus said, You have said so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he gave no answer. Then Jesus, then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they testify against you? But he gave, them no answer. he gave him no answer to his single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now, at the feast, the governor was accustomed to released with the crowd any one prisoner whom they wanted, and they had then a, a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they gathered Pilate, said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had delivered him up. Besides, while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, have nothing to do with that righteous man, for I have suffered much much because of him today in a dream. Now the chief priest and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas to destroy Jesus. The governor again said to him, Which uh, of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do when Jesus who is called Christ? They also had let him be crucified. And he said, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And all the people answered, His blood be upon us and our children. Then he released from them, Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. 
Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole battalion before him, and they stripped him, and they put a scarlet robe on him, and twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head, and put a reed in his right hand, and knowing before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, king of the Jews, and they spit on him, and took the reed, and struck him on the head, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe, and put his clothes on him, and led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, and compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came on a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gold, but when he tasted it, he could not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And over his head they put the charge against him which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then the two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left, one on the le right and one on the left. And those who passed by to ride in him wagging their heads and saying, knew he would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes and the elders mocked him, saying, He saved others. He could not save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusts in God. Let him now, let God deliver him now. If he desires him, for he said, I am the Son of God. And the robbers who were crucified with him also reviled him in the same way. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, la shemanani, or whatever, I don't know what it says. But it translates to, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, This man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once went and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook, and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tomb, tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him came and watched over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, Truly, this was the Son of God. There were also many women there, looking from a distance, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him, among whom were Mary Madeline, and Mary the mother of James, and Joseph, and the mother of the son of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea, named Joseph, who also was a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud and laid it on his own new tomb, which he had cut in the rock, which he had cut in the rock, and he roared, rolled a great stone to the entrance of the tomb, and went away. Mary Madeline and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is after the day of preparation, the chief priest and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we now remember how the impostor said, While he was still alive, after three days I will rise. Therefore, order the tomb to be made secure. 
until the third day. Let his disciples go and steal him away and tell the people he has risen from the dead and the last fraud will be worse than the first. Pilate said, You have a guard of soldiers. Go well, make it as secure as you can. So they went and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone and getting the guard. So, so. Matthew 27. I really, really love this passage of the Bible. I love it. Talks about the crucifixion, the death of Jesus, which is very, very emotional to talk about. Very hard to talk about, but we got to talk about it. Not just once a year. At least you talk about it a lot. More than once a year. It's a pivotal point in our Christian history. Anyway, the death of Jesus. The crucifixion. Jesus was mocked. He was whipped. The son of uh, Simon, by name, he came to help Jesus. He carried Jesus' cross. Uh, that that was a very amazing to read, I think. That someone else helped Jesus and that he carried Jesus' cross. He helped him. He helped him, which is very, very awesome. The death of Jesus, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This part when the Father really did um, first forsake Jesus the Son when he died on the cross. No no other person would do that. No other person would take sin, someone else's sins, the whole human race's sins, and die on the cross. But that person that did do that, for real, was Jesus. Jesus himself. He, 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 he did that for us, which is very, very, very awesome. And I love that. I love that he did that for us. So Jesus died on the cross. The the earth was dark for six to, from the sixth hour to the ninth hour, which is very astonishing. And the the veil broke open in two. And Jesus was buried. And he was buried in the tomb. And after this, three days later, he rises from the dead. Rises from the dead. Which is awesome. And it's also awesome that after this moment, other other people rose from the dead. And many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised after Jesus died on the cross. They were, they were raised from the dead, which is pretty... Pretty astonishing and amazing when you think about it. The crucifixion. Let God deliver him now. For he said, I am the Son of God. That, that's that's, a mock, that's a mockery, which is very, very wrong. And we shouldn't, we shouldn't mock. But they were mocking Jesus, the Son of God, when he was dealing with that, when he was dying on the cross. To think that Jesus would do this for us is very amazing. The crucifixion is a very powerful thing. We should we should make disciples of all nations. We should talk to more people about Jesus. Tell them what they did for what he did for us. The, the crucifixion. We should tell them about it and how we rose again. Why he did this all for us. You know, John three sixteen says is a pop. Sorry, my iPad stopped me. Anyway, the crucifixion is very, very, very important. I point to my Christian history. We should make disciples of Jesus and all of that. So, I'm gonna end this message. I'm gonna do, talk about the the rising, the resurrection. Hopefully on Sunday. If not, I will push it to Monday. But let's hope I can do it on Sunday. Anyway, I'm going to pray. And then I'm going to end this video. Dear God, thank you very much for this time I can do this, Lord. You are awesome. You are amazing. Please, next time, don't have the iPad turned off so many times and stop me preaching. 
And uh, yeah, we're doing an awesome, amazing piece of the club and, and all the bad stuff happening in the world right now. In the name of the say, amen. So yeah, I'll see you all in the next video, guys. Hope you like this message. Peace.